Hey everyone, you are here uh, dialed in to season three, episode four, right, Stomps? I <laughs> couldn't tell you. Of the neutral zone. Anyways, guys, check it out. Today we're not going to listen to any music because we're on a little bit of a tight schedule. Uh, we're back by popular demand. We got a lot of guests here, uh, some returning guests. Uh, I think, Bruner, you've been on this show before, right? Yes. Our, Okay, we're going to make sure that Bruner smiles a little bit, but that, that's our, oh, there he goes. Okay. All right. Good stuff. Okay, guys, listen, we have a lot of ground to cover here today. Uh, I want to make sure that you guys can, can you guys all see my screen here? Yes, yeah. sir. Okay, good stuff. Okay, good. So this is an exclusive edition. We don't usually do this uh, very often. We actually don't do the show that often, but we are uh, in need, the fans are in need of recognizing a couple of big things here today and talking through um, some very important facts. So first of all, I'm honored and privileged here to be with uh, Stomps, my co-host on the Neutral Zone. We also have three very uh, um, esteemed guests. So I'll start from the top. We got uh, William Jacques. Uh, his ancestry DNA says that he is hailing from some village in Quebec. Is that correct? If you say so, buddy, yeah. we're good. Then we have uh, Daniel, uh, I like to call him DNA Bruner. Uh, he is uh, currently residing in the, the lovely North Shore town of Deerfield, Illinois. Uh, and then on the bottom of the screen, we have uh, Frank Klein, who's uh, been uh, a regular on the show. He's uh, kind of uh, leading a lot of important initiatives, which we'll talk about later in the show. So we got a couple of big things today. We're going to talk about a big day. We're going to talk about Chicago's pride. I don't have a, a rainbow to show here, but we are going to talk about Chicago's pride here. Uh, and then third, we're going to talk about a couple of current events, not current event. And then the real meat of the discussion here is the, the Pottstown Masters breakdown. I'm going to leave it over to Stomps to talk with these uh, three guests here on the show that were all present in Pottstown. I was also there, but I'm not going to be here answering questions. I'm going to let Stomps sort of address that with these three phenomenal human beings. And then Frank, if you can stick around, uh, just a quick NBHL update. If not, maybe we'll have uh, William do that. And then the Wednesday league uh, we'll talk a little bit about because uh, there's some questions out there uh, that the, the media wants to ask you, uh, William, about that. Does that sound good? Sounds great. Sounds amazing. All right. So listen, guys, I, I, I do think it's important to recognize that, you know, old lives do matter. And I wanted to make sure that, uh, this show is a non-denominational -denom show. We don't discriminate on every anybody here. So this is why we wanted to welcome uh, Frank to the 50-year-old uh, uh, club. Happy birthday to Frank Klein. How are you, Frank? How was your big day? Uh, it was good. I'm an old man. It's official now. Yeah. yeah. I, I noticed you're wearing the reading glasses in that picture. Is that something that's a staple for you now? Oh, yeah. I can't see the screen right now. My eyes are shut. All right. And do any of these gifts look like, did you get any of these on your birthday or you want to order them? <laughs> I didn't get any gifts. Oh, wow. Uh, what'd you do last night? What'd you do? Uh, well, anything uh, special? Yeah, I went, uh, I met my wife downtown. We went to uh, Gibson's Italia overlooking the river. So I had, I had the Chicago cut, beautiful piece of meat. And then I uh, came home and got some, some gifts from, uh, from Sarah and the kids that were, they were really nice and touching. So it was a good night. Good, good. Any words of wisdom, uh, wisdom William, you want to share uh, with Frank? No, he knows everything. He's <laughs> he's phenomenal. He's terrific. Okay. All right. Well, very inspiring. Uh, good. Congratulations to you. Listen, I think we should take a moment to recognize two of these guests here, right? So both uh, Dan, Dan Bruner and Frank Klein have uh, made the USA Masters team. Uh, it's great to have uh, Chicago representation. So congratulations to you, to you uh, both phenomenal hockey players. Uh, tell me, tell me what this means to you uh, personally, Dan. Um, this is pretty exciting. It's uh, pretty eager to head up to Edmonton in August and uh, play with uh, Frank and the rest of the uh, old guys that made the squad. Excellent. Now, are you one of the younger guys on there? Or are you kind of in the mid? I'm probably one of the younger ones. I don't actually turn uh, 45 until um, like one week before the uh, tournament starts. So I'm barely sliding in under the th into the uh, threshold. 
Right. Well, you still have great wheels. Frank, I think you've played on this before. Frank, uh, is this your first time or you've played on the team before, right? <clears throat> yeah, I've done it a couple times before. It's, uh, it's a really good experience. It's a lot of fun. <clears throat> uh, and it was, you know, it wasn't easy for Dan and I to make the team. There's so many good players still at our, at our age level. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we had two tryout camps, one in New Jersey, one in Harrisburg. And, uh, the level of competition was, was really impressive for the old guys. So it was a lot of fun, uh, that, you know, just a great experience, even just trying out. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, we're looking forward to it. Like Dan said, the tournament's in Edmonton, uh, in August. Excellent. Will Sheets be giving you tips on like where to go in Edmonton and that kind of thing? Uh, I don't know. I don't, is he going to be rooting for us or Canada? We'll have to see where his loyalties lie. I think the bigger question is, is there anything to do in Edmonton? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good stuff. Well, listen, guys, we are so excited for you. We're going to be watching. I'm sure it's going to be live stream. Uh, good luck. Um, you guys are going to, are you going to able to wear like a little Chicago flag on your sleeve? Is that how it works? Like depending on the city you're representing? I, uh, I have no idea about that yet. Nothing's been announced there. Nothing, nothing official. I did put yeah. some uh, uh, Chicago stickers on my helmet. So okay. hopefully we'll let, we'll let that fly. And when I did it the last time I had a Chicago sticker on, uh, on my stick blade. Yeah. So what's on the Chicago game. sticker? Is it a picture of a gun and a gang? Like what's on it? <laughs> no, it's basically the Chicago flag and it says oh, Team yeah. Chicago on it. Good stuff. Okay, stop. Stay with us. Okay, good. Okay, listen, guys, a show would not be complete without this. So, guys, I don't know if you've seen, but the Cybertruck is on the road. Uh, I was able to catch uh, one on Devon Avenue. I took a quick picture. I think this is where Freddie's beat is. Uh, is that right, William? That's where yes. his beat is, right? So I, I, I saw the cyber truck on the road. Listen, this has been in the a long time coming. Congratulate Elon Musk once again d defies the odds, and he deserves huge, huge kudos. Uh, I'm just so proud of him. I think he's one of the most intelligent men on the planet. Great businessman, just a phenomenal human being. Thank you, um, Dan Bruner, for the support, and I know how much you love uh, Elon Musk. Okay. All right. Did, did, didn't Art Carpenter order one of those? He did, as did I. We both put our deposit on it. <laughs> the one percent. It's a, it's a, it's a great car. No one's gonna mess with you when you're driving that. Okay. All right. Uh, Billy Jacques, tell us what's going on in the NBA, <laughs> my friend. Well, your Toronto Raptors has the only player that has been suspended for life for. Um, uh, for gambling, uh, actually, there's three stories here. Number one, he uh, divulged information about his personal health to gamblers, and uh, they bet the under, so they won a lot of money. Uh, number two, he was betting on gambling. He was betting on his games. Uh, they basically threw the book at him. It was pretty stupid on his part. Um, and, um, yeah, pretty bad, pretty bad. Surprising that it's not happening more with the prevalence of gambling in, in sports. So that's I'm it. Still, I'm still hoping for an Otani lifetime uh, ban. Yeah, I if I was Otani, I would I would give my uh, uh, banking information and stuff and all that stuff to an interpreter. That, that, that makes sense to me too. <laughs> well, I, I listen, if there's – one person on this call that seems to know everything about every sport. And I think you must listen to sports radio 24 seven. Is that right, William? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. I know more about sports than I do about current events. Okay. Yeah. Good. Well, or music. We're happy to have you listen, guys. Uh, what's let's talk about the masters. <laughs> this is, this is a real important um, event that just happened uh, two weeks ago. Uh, and, and there's three, uh, big big masters players on this on this uh on this interview so let's let's get to it i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna tell stomps to kind of take it over from here uh frank you've been talking about this bus uh for a while to get all these players in the bus is there any way you can make an arrangement with the Pottstown municipal airport to see if we can just fly right in there from pewaukee airport <laughs> yeah maybe get kramer to fly it in billy could be our co-pilot right <laughs> exactly um I, i'm hoping we can do it but stop i'm gonna hand it over to you because i think you're the guy here to really pressure test uh these 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 fine um masters gentlemen here 
that anybody could uh, answer. You know, I watched some of the tournament. The stream is terrible compared to the one we had in January in Chicago. Just just an awful stream situation. But um, so went to the semifinals, and you ran up against who was it? The WD forty guys. Yeah. Is it? What's the deal there? I mean, they seem to have GC's number a little bit. I know I'm sure they're a good team. I mean, obviously. Did they win it all? No, they wound up losing in the finals in overtime. So obviously they were uh, right in the mix getting to the finals. But, yeah. you know, I watched that uh, that semifinal game as best I could through the, that stream. And it um, seemed like there were a lot of penalties from what I could could tell. And, and at the end of the day, weren't the special teams the difference? I mean, I think they all three of their goals were power play and uh, – you guys only had one. Yeah, we lost uh, two to one in that game. Both or their goals were one. power play goals. Sorry. Two I one. think we actually had uh, five power plays ourselves and only were able to convert on one of them. Well, I mean, what do you attribute to that? I mean, obviously you give credit, tip your hockey helmet to the other team for, you know, what they did and maybe their goalie stood on their head. I don't know. It's so hard to tell on that stream, but that, let's hear from you guys how, how you saw it. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in and then I, and then I got to head out. Um, yeah. We worked on our, our our power play quite a bit, and uh, you know we did get a couple goals over the weekend. Um, we just you know we just didn't finish. We had pretty good chances on all, but like I think one of those five power plays, we didn't really work much on uh, penalty kill, and it showed. So we lost coverage uh, quite a bit, and that was a good team. I mean, they're, they're a team similar to us as far as skill wise. They've been playing together a long time, um, but I think just kind of structurally, they're a little further ahead than we are, and I think that was probably the difference. Um, but yeah, like you said, it came down to special teams. We had our chances. I mean, we definitely could have won the game. It was it was a good game, but just couldn't find that extra goal when we needed it. Yeah, I mean, it's a fine line there. I mean, what what do you think? How, how do you any gaps you're looking to? Phil to, you know, looking ahead to the next tournament, whenever that may be. Uh, I was curious, you know, like younger guys coming up that are getting toward to that age where, where they can play um, with you guys. There goes Frank. That's Frank right. Leave, I by the we, way, got, we, got, we got three guys here who are at the tournament. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. So we can all answer too. It's, it's, go ahead. Dan, Dan why don't you start? So I think you? there's, um, so the first, yes, there's a couple of guys that are uh, becoming Masters eligible that have been playing with Team Chicago or just at the rink in Palatine for many years that were very actively recruiting to come on out to uh, Potsdown for the Masters tournament. Um, I think that would help. I think we had a little bit of trouble where some of the guys that um, were pushed into duty playing center for us, it wasn't necessarily their natural position. And that hurt us a little bit. Um, other than that, I mean, everyone out there played very well, very hard. It wasn't like uh, we were outplayed in any one game. It's just, like Frank said, there were a couple of times we just didn't finish on some of the uh, power plays. How about you, William? Um, yeah, I mean, I would say that um, it in these tournaments, um, Goals are very hard to come by in general. Um, and uh, tight games come down to, just like in any other sport, um, those tight games come down to maybe a play here or a play there. Um, when you get down to the semifinals in these things, the, the margin for error is, is slim to none. And um, when you get five power plays, you have to convert. Um, I think the people who are coming through in the future will help with that uh, substantially. Um, it's it's just you know two one hockey games a two one hockey game. I mean, it had it had a lot of stuff involved in the game. I mean, there was 
there was some stuff early where I mean they they like to crowd the net um uh, WD forty. They like to put guys in front of that. They like to work the slot area. Um, we were buzzing the ball around a little bit too and and had some chances. Uh the goalie made some nice saves. Um, you know, we were but one one with not a lot of time left. What four or five minutes, Dan, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's anybody's game at that point, and and you know it, it it comes back when 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 you have five power plays. I mean, there's always a reason why you win and a reason why you lose, and it's usually about this big, and it was in that game. I mean, we could easily win that game two to one and and face that that team in the finals. But uh, I think as these things evolve and and move on throughout the years, you get some newer blood in there. And um, it kind of helps, but uh, it was a fun weekend, guys. I mean, it always is. It was it was a fun weekend. Some people fly, some people drive. I know our personal experiences between you know me and Dan and and Joe and and Chris Frederick. We had a fun time. I mean, we you know we got to visit Dan's favorite pizza place, um, like we always go to, and and I got to visit um, the Esteem College that he um uh he attended Carnegie Mellon. Uh I got to see Pitt University. I mean, I feel more cultured going to these events with Dan. So it it really helps because I'm always watching Sports Center. So I need that. Yeah. Well you definitely sure, you sure you got the right area of Pennsylvania you're talking about? We drove through Pittsburgh on the way oh, out. Okay. Well, talking well, about yes. those stop. Uh, listen, um Billy, I don't want to elaborate too much on something you said, but I I'm just curious when you said goals are hard to come by, do you feel that the opponents of the devil rejects would say the same thing? <laughs> um, trying, to be, trying to be politically correct. I don't think the devil re- devil's rejects put themselves in a really good situation. I think they were out there for, um maybe a little different reason um i think they're they're having a great time i mean the boys have a great time bobby d and the boys have a great time and it's tough frank will tell you i know he's not on here now it's tough to get guys to commit uh away from their families away from work away from um a lot of stuff to get out there and get this together it's not easy but i will tell you as many games as those boys lost and as many goals they lost by they had a good time we did. And they didn't, the smiles were on their faces. The smiles were on their faces. So yeah. I, I give them credit for, for that part of it. The hockey was going to be an uphill battle at best. Yeah. Um, I appreciate the answer and, and the, the police. Yeah, I'll even jump in on that a little bit. Yeah, now. Ahead, that, and you can tell they were having a good time. Bobby D didn't even throw his stick until the 25th goal they let up. <laughs> so they really did have a good time. And I think that was the the final goal that they let in. Yeah. Um, Frank's back with us, by the way. Yeah, that's that's good. Thanks for rejoining, Frank. I I think Bobby D had mentioned at some point that he was having some gastrointestinal issues during the weekend, and I think he was blaming it on the nuclear power plant. Um, I think we should probably have him checked out because I think it might have had something to do with the alcohol. Or it could have been, maybe Frank could tell us a little bit more. It could be the liver flukes, but you just never know because Pittsburgh or Pennsylvania is known for liver flukes, I think, Dan. It's one of the highest uh, concentrations in the country with uh, liver flukes. Of, yeah, uh, that may be something you know about. I'm not familiar with that. Okay. I think it was I think it was the uh, Irish car bombs or whatever they were drinking. Yeah, they had quite a few of those too. <laughs> they could have been the, could have been okay. the case. <laughs> yeah okay so um i i do want to say agree with all you guys it is a fun weekend and uh thank you to you guys all i just i do think that you guys do a real nice job with planning and and the way you guys did the jersey distribution it was a really well oiled so um nicely done i'm sure stomps you have a few more questions um I just what was was this the first um tournament for dan reed with you guys he uh, played with us in Iowa, but it's the first five on five. Yeah. And he scored a power play goal, did he not? In the he, tournament? Did, he did, he yeah. He scored our first goal, right, Dan? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I have and to it, give Dan some credit. Um, uh, I, unselfishly, that's Dan's position on the power play. 
And he had actually had Dan Reed go in that position. And I think it pays. I, I've seen it work in some of the, the practices and it worked in that game. But uh, Dan, that was quite unselfish of you. Um, is it fair to say that you're a team player? I don't think anyone would ever call me that, Nev. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that was good, Dan. That was that was your version of comedy. I love it, Dan. Good job. Dan, I would call you a team player. <laughs> Thank uh, you, Frank. You might be the only one. <laughs> All right. Didn't you guys have some latecomers into the onto the school, you know, just to make it to the tournament, like yeah, second line center or second. Yeah, line so center. we had a couple guys drop out late, which unfortunately happens. Um, we were lucky that uh, Greg Bukowski was able to mm -hmm. jump in. He wound up um, centering a line with uh, Sean Dennison and Dan Reed. Um, and then we also had Timmy drop out. So we had to move some people around and Chris Frederick was able to jump in as our sixth defenseman. Um, but I mean, we were we had to do a couple of other things on juggling, right? When Timmy wasn't there, one of the ideas was that Dan Reed was going to start off back on defense. Cause I think that's more of his uh, natural position, but um, he was able to jump in and stay on a forward spot. And, you know, he played great all weekend too. What's next for GC on the calendar we got? Great question. Besides Mondays. So we're gonna we'll we'll do something for Iowa again with the three on three. And uh Billy was talking about doing some type of a social event this summer. And then uh we'll be looking at some more uh masters opportunities hopefully this fall. But there's nothing else on the on the calendar at this point. Yeah, Frank, I was talking with uh Jason Kelly. He was mentioning that uh there was the um Nashville tournament back in the summer last year. He said they're going to try and do the Nashville event again, but maybe open up a master's uh, division there. So I think that one this year is going to be held the same weekend that I'm hosting an over 50 tournament. Oh, okay. Okay. So that might be tough. So it might be tough there. When is that weekend, Frank, the over 50 and that's in Palatine, right? The, uh, I don't have the calendar in front of me. It's the first weekend of August. I think it's yeah. like August 4th, 5th. It's whatever that first Saturday, Sunday of August are. That's great. But that's the week before Iowa, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. Bless you. Thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of exciting things happening uh, this summer. There's, uh, hockey's in full full bloom with us with Monday and Wednesday and NBHL and Woodridge and Glencoe. And yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on. August of... especially is going to be pretty wild between Frank's tournament in Palatine, Iowa, like the week after, and then a couple weeks later, then we're heading out to uh, Canada. So, Right. That's a lot of hockey. Needs, who you, needs family? Dan and Frank, do you guys, are there any specific restrictions on how many you can play? Does your master's coach kind of tell you that, hey, you can't play two weeks before? Like, is there any restrictions? No. Well, we have I'm not a... heard anything like that, no. Okay, that's good. You can keep playing. I think they just want to make sure that we stay in shape. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Frank, you talked about the Iowa tournament for GC. Uh, would you consider putting two teams in there? Because you can't carry the same number of players in that roster as you could, right? So um, is there a possibility? So what I'll do is, you know, probably sometime in June, I'll reach out to the whole group and just say, who's in? You know, who's interested? Who wants to go? And then from there, we'll probably just build the best team we can or best two teams. It might be a D3 or D4. You know, it just depends yeah. on who's in, what the rankings are. And that one's a little tough for us because it's not age-restricted, so it's just your rankings. And the rankings really don't work for the older guys because on the one hand, you know, like we might have the skill of the, of the higher-ranked player, but maybe not the conditioning or – the speed or stamina of a 20 year old and uh but it is what it is so we'll, we'll just make the best of it and uh just kind of do what we can for whoever wants to play that sounds great i mean there's definitely like like dan said there's there's no shortage of hockey going on these days yeah 
when you throw in some of the games in Glencoe, uh, and then there's other guys who play in Woodridge. Uh, Stomps, do you have any questions, um, uh, additional questions on Pottstown, like, uh, you know, about, you know, the team, the tournament? I, I kind of covered some ground there. I, I had one or two questions, but I wanted to make sure you had the opportunity. No, I'm good. Go ahead. Um, this question is more for uh, Billy Jacques. Um, in terms of the weekend, uh, what would you say was your favorite meal while you're out there? Favorite meal? Um, so I think it was Wawa, sandwich from Wawa. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. So when we associate a you know a gas station here in this in in Illinois I would never buy a sandwich from a gas station not that I have never bought a sandwich from a gas station but you just don't associate it with high quality food right um but a couple years into this I watched Dan um eat every hour on the hour and still stay the same size and I don't know how he does it um and he would, he'd say, yeah, yeah, they got, you know, homemade sandwiches at Wawa and stuff. And I would go in there and I'm like, there's no way. There's no way. It, it can't be good. And I tried it a couple of years back and I love it. I think I might have had a Wawa sandwich three times that weekend. It was great. Roast beef and provolone, by the way. Just so you know. Billy, if you're ever in Pontiac, Illinois, try Wally's, which is a giant right off the interstate giant gas station. It's really awesome. Good, really good food. There. It's awesome. I love that place. Every time I go to a pharmacy event, I stop there and take pictures. It's an amazing place. I love it. That's great. Well, we're going to come back to you, Dan, in a sec. Uh, I had a question for Frank as he enters into his golden years. Um, <laughs> do you feel like uh, you can answer this? If you were to look at three criteria in terms of what you look for, in a master's experience in Pottstown. And I was to say, number one is competitiveness. Number two is fitness. And then number three is just fun. How would you rate those three in order of your priority? Um, so what was it? Fitness, fun, was that the last one? Yeah, fitness, fun, and competitive team. Uh, well, when we go out there, uh, we want to win. So I guess, you know, having a competitive team, uh, the opportunity to win, that's, you know, that's the goal. Number one. Uh, but, uh, you know, we want to have fun. If you're asking me, like, what, what am I looking for out of the players? Uh, yeah. I mean, like, it's kind of the same at any level of hockey right? You've got to be able to run, you know, like if it's ice hockey, you've got to be able to skate. That's like the first thing. Well, for us, it's a running game. You've got to be able to run and move and, 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 and your fitness and conditioning, that's critical. Like you can't be a successful tournament player. I don't think if you're not in good shape. And then obviously having uh, the requisite skills, being able to stick, handle, pass, shoot, those kinds of things. The hockey IQ, understanding what your job is at any given time, and then competing, busting your ass to make it happen. Very good. And and Dan, uh, seems like you were very adamant about like the competitive uh, one. Is that is that your number one, two, and three? Pretty much. I mean, the only reason to go out for these things is to win them, right? I mean, there's other tournaments we've been to where it's, you know, you want to have a good time and hockey is important, but it may not be number one. I will. This one, like, we're not going to like a resort town. We're in Pottstown. There's nothing else to do there except to win the hockey games, right? So that's it. Um, and we're going to do everything we can again next year to get the best, most competitive team out there and go win it. It's the only goal, right? And you know, in the spirit of self reflection and being an introspective person, I want to start with uh, Billy Jacques here. If there was one thing you would have done differently at the tournament personally, and I know it's a team game, but is there one thing you wish you had done differently 
because like Dan said, it's, it's a one goal game. I mean, uh, it could have went the other. I think that was you, Dan, who said we could have won two one, right? Is that, was that you or was that Frank? Could have won four to one if we'd done a couple yeah. things differently. So you sure. lose, you lose two one or you lose three one, whatever. The margin of error is so small that one person doing one thing differently maybe potentially could have made a difference. So let me ask you, Billy, first, if there's one thing you wish you personally would have done differently that fuels what you do for next year, what is that? Um, stop more shots. Um, I mean, that you could say that anytime. Yeah. But, uh, I think you know, when, the team a very good chance to win. I don't think I, that that's the issue. I understand that, but but there is there are times in a game where maybe you could have held the puck many times you could have you, you can always second guess yourself but when goals are hard to come by and you're playing close games for the most part uh sorry bobby d um you you, you always feel like you can stop it right like the second game against the worm burners we tied 2-2 we shouldn't have tied 2-2 absolutely not yeah that's a win, right? Um, That's a good win, right? And, and but you always think about that stuff because it has changed the outcome of what was going to happen. I don't know. Yeah. But um, as a competitor, you always want to do better. So you just look to do better. Um, you look to, uh, you know, uh, be more fit. Um, uh, track pucks better from the goalie spot. Um, um, maybe communicate a little more with your defenseman. It's all part of it. Uh, but you can always do. St- you know, stuff better. Yeah. I get scared when I ask you for one and you give me six. Sorry. Hey, hey man. <laughs> yeah. You don't need to hide behind your media credentials. You were there on the team. What's the one thing you would have done? Before? I was going to get to me at the end, but okay. I will tell you, I think for me, I think, you know, I'm continuing to work on fitness as Frank knows. I think that's important uh, thing for me. And I, I got to play more, right? Like, all this travel has kind of limited my ability to play as much as I can. Um, you know, I think that's the one thing, just focus on fitness and being more present at games. I think that'll just, I'm fine. I mean, I, the, like all you guys have been playing this game for a long time. Once you stop playing for an extended period of time, it takes a longer time to get back into it. Uh, that's, that's, that's it for me. Um, uh, Frank, you, you put a lot of time and um, commitment into your fitness uh, you did have a good tournament. I'd say you were very productive uh, from the score sheet perspective, particularly in the round robin. Let's not count the game against Bobby D's team, but let's just say you were very productive. Um, would you have played those additional games? Uh, do you think that that hurts you at all by um, being a great citizen and supporting other teams? Or uh, how do you feel about doing that? Um, and would you do that again? Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't feel like my conditioning was a problem. Uh, sure. And actually, like the last game, I was probably the best I felt the whole weekend because it's kind of warmed up. You know, everything's loose. Uh, obviously, like I'd like to, you know, come into the tournament a little bit sharper as far as my fitness. I was out of town the week before that, and the last few weeks heading into the tournament, I wasn't, you know, as diligent with my trainings I would have liked. I think for me, like I uh I think I have the biggest impact on the team more from a leadership point of view. I think our uh like our team really has to continue to work on some of the little things. So like for example, we never really got to penalty kills in our in our preparation. Uh, and that affected us in that in that last game. So, yeah, like, we could all be in better shape, and and that's important and critical, like I said earlier. Uh, But we also have to make the commitment to making sure we're playing the team game the right way. I think if we do that, that's where we can really push ourselves over the top. And I think that's where where I need to continue to kind of lead in that area. I think one of the other challenges, too, that we have is that – like we were able to practice the power play and you can generally do a power play against any other different group of opponents, but we did have practices against other guys. And like Frank said, we really didn't get a good chance to have experience of a power play against guys our age or like what we'd be expected to see in the tournament. 
Does that make sense? Like, yeah, a power play against some of the fastest, youngest players out in Palatine. They're yeah. going to move the ball in a very different manner than the way that the team that we're going to be playing against in the Masters tournament is going to be uh, moving it around. Right. It's just a different strategy. One's going to be more of a positioning versus more of a speed and, you know, moving around backdoor type plays. So as many real game experiences as possible. Dan, yeah. Dan, listen, let's, it's not a secret, right? Like, look, we do want to talk about you a little bit personally, because it's not a secret when we go to this tournament, uh, you know, the team looks to you for offensive production and yeah. you are one of the faster, talented um, you got a great nose for the net. Uh, I wanted to ask you in terms of your weekend, uh, I, I, you know, a lot of this stuff is just bad bounces and timing and things like that. I think you came in really well prepared, but from your perspective, how do you feel about your weekend? And is there anything you would like to focus on for next time? I didn't finish anything. I think that's the uh, biggest issue. It was, uh, I mean, I'm, I care more about how we do as a team, sure. but I know I have to contribute to the team and I didn't score. I didn't score in any of the games, you know, I had a couple of assists along the way and it wasn't like I was, I disappeared, but just didn't finish anything. And that weighed on me the entire tournament. And I yelled at Billy on the way back home too, about it. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I did notice. Uh, I mean, I know this is not necessarily what you come out to do, but I did notice your penalty killing was quite good. I uh, There was one particular shift where you had a very good PK. I, I know that's not as gratifying maybe to you as, as getting the win, of course, uh, but it was a pretty pivotal penalty kill. I, I do agree with Frank. That was one of my thoughts as well around our penalty kill, not only practicing, but, you know, I think there's an opportunity to sort of think about who you have on your PK because a lot of these good teams, they have specialist players on the PK they don't necessarily have their top line guys expending a lot of energy on the PK. Those guys are really good for five on five, the late stretches of the game, you know, you know, on the power play. I, I think in addition to Frank's point about practicing the penalty kill, I think the resourcing around the penalty kill is something that I would encourage. We look at a little bit more closely. Back yeah. And I think we did have a pretty good plan for that one yeah. going into the weekend, but again, due to some late roster shuffling, we did have to move that around a little bit. Sure, sure. Um, and even in that last game, I think, you know, we mentioned with how many times we were power play versus penalty kill back and forth a lot of times. Um, you know, our lines weren't always set in the way that we wanted to. So we had to juggle. We had to mix up some of the lines compared to what we wanted to do. But, I mean, in an ideal situation, yeah, we try and get some of that set. You could hear those guys when they were on the PK. They're yelling out, diamond diamond box box right based off of what we were doing and so yeah. they had that they had that um they knew what to do there they understood how we were trying to attack them and then how to defend that and i would guess that the vast majority of our guys don't understand what to do in a diamond what to do in a box and when and why you do it so that's like part of the thing for next year is, is kind of teaching all those making sure everyone understands all their roles and responsibilities, whether you're the number one PK, two, three, four, we want everyone to understand what everyone's job is. Right. Right. Yeah, I agree. I think that's, uh, that's fair. Stomps, do you have any more questions about Pottstown? Well, I think we covered it pretty well. And... Yeah. Um, hey, William, uh, I wanted to, first of all, congratulate you on the win yesterday in the semifinals. I believe it was a overtime win. Uh, Death defeated the A-team, so congratulations to that. And I believe Pizza Bats defeated Dynamo, so the finals will be Death versus the Pizza Bats next week. So we have uh, two, a representative from each team here uh, this evening. Um, uh Billy, tell me what what's your vision right now for the league? I think that that there was one lopsided game in the semis. Uh, the league, you you've done a phenomenal job with the GMs, kind of, you know, building the excitement and everything on that. I think we're we're going through a trans transitory stage here. Um, yeah, with all the hockey available to people in the summer, um, with NBHL and 
Glencoe and Iowa and Woodridge and all the um, outdoor hockey that's played, it's sometimes tougher in the summer to get the amount of players involved um, because there is a lot of hockey going on and there's more options. Um, What we're going to do is we're just going to look at the four rosters and see if we can move stuff around and and make things a little more um, even for um for everybody because um we just want competitive games um the first game was not competitive um and dynamo uh and death throughout the uh throughout the session uh for different reasons um um just weren't totally competitive all you know all session um so we're we'll make adjustments to it you know we have two captains on each team will have some dialogue um, continuous um, and make it work because uh, what we're trying to do is uh, is create competition and good hockey. So that's what we're doing. So no rebranding of any of the logos here, right? I feel no like rebranding of any of the logos at this point. Yeah. At this point. But uh, I think it's, those are different logos, aren't they? It's yeah, they certainly different. Yeah. I think the dynamo one by far is the best. Okay. Um, real quick, real quick. Uh, I don't have a slide for this, Frank and uh, others, but N- NBHL, Frank, you want to give us a quick uh, 30 second to one minute uh, update on what's going on with the NBHL upcoming um, and, and where we're at with that league. So we kick off the season this Saturday, uh, three to four o'clock. The two best teams really on paper, I, I think are the the snipers and the stingrays and they'll face off in the first game and those two teams are loaded with young kids and then you have the monkey business and the rat kings which is a collection of some south siders some raiders some bh kings uh some on-offs you know people from throughout the league uh that we kind of work together for those two teams to to build a couple of uh, uh balanced teams and they'll, and they'll, we'll be competitive um, but yeah, so it's just a, it's just a four team league this season. We kick off, kick off Saturday and, uh, you know, we're all fighting for the chance to represent Chicago in the Milek cup, which is quickly becoming one of the more esteemed prizes in our sport. That's great. That's great. Well, look, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be exciting. It's on a Saturday, another day of hockey. Uh, Stomps, any closing comments uh, about anything about Woodridge? Any injury updates that you want to share with the group? Well, we did see uh, Danielle at the rink on Monday sporting a nice scar on her left knee, but she seems to be doing great. She said she's still three or four months away from coming back, but she fully intends to. So, right. that, I mean, that, that's kind of the main uh, – right injury but I you know so I mean you know we're playing Woodridge one game I mean we've played probably about five so far this season um there's been no double games on a Sunday you know there's struggling just to have one quite frankly but we, we have done that so right um and, and we've had some good ones actually so um no complaints there the We've had good conditions. The floor has been really good. Um, yeah, and Glencoe, you know, has been retooled a little bit by Scully, um, going from a D2, D4 to a D1, 3, and 5 setup. So, you know, jury's still out how that's all going to shake out. Hopefully it will work out pretty well for everybody. The place is, they're done with the renovations there and everything looks good. Um, and there's no rain up here, just so you know, Frank and the Stomps. You guys have games today. I don't see rain up here. Uh, well, I'm on my way there. It's raining where I am. Yeah. Um, listen, you guys all and the millions and millions of our viewers tuned into season three, episode four of the greatest hockey podcast ever made Uh, i wanted to ask you guys a a quick closing question for all the four um esteemed people on this call 
Um, tell me who are the two finalists in the Stanley Cup final this year and who's going to win the cup. Let's start with um, Frank Klein. I'm going to go uh, Florida and Edmonton with uh, Edmonton winning it. How many games? It's going to go seven. The Canadian team hasn't won since 1993 where the Habs beat the Kings in no. five games. So you're really going out on a limb here. 30, 31 it's years. Connor McDavid, it's, it's, it's his turn. He's he's going to – he's going to – So you heard it from Frank. Um, Edmonton, Florida, Edmonton, and you said six? Okay. Seven. 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 Dan Bruner, you can't say Philadelphia. Why not? I think there's going to be some technicality that allows them to uh, get back in. I'll go with the Vancouver Canucks and the Carolina Hurricanes. Who wins and in how many games? Oh, Canucks in seven. Another Canadian team after 31 years, eh? Okay, all right. I'm trying to pick the least likely scenario and probably the one that the NHL likes the least in terms of uh, viewership. Oh, right. Sounds like I'm sure <laughs> used by most Canadians, but thank you. Um, okay, William Jocks. Okay. Um, I'm going to take the Rangers in the East because I like Mike Richter. Is he, <laughs> is he still the goalie? No? All right. And I'm going to take um, the Dallas Stars because Brett Hall's skate was still in the crease, and I don't really like that. Uh, and I'm going to have the Dallas Stars winning the Stanley Cup. Wow, that's a and how many games? Five. And you guys know we're gonna come back to this and look at this. Five games, Dallas Stars against okay. the Rangers. Okay, uh Chris Stompanato, my esteemed co-host. Um I I'm picking the Dallas and Carolina in the finals with a Dallas big D in six. Wow. Okay. I'm going to go with the Tampa Bay Lightning, and they're oh. going to defeat the Las Vegas Golden Knights in six games. That's my prediction. That's interesting. Yeah. So uh, what, what's the uh, what's the wager here? What do we get to whoever gets this right or closest? It's a good question. Um, I don't know. We can – we can do something. We can do something. Maybe uh um, better think of something on the spot, Mr. Host. Do you have a coupon I'll, for one I'll of your you guys, Okay, the winner, the well, the winner doesn't really have to pay a fee. How about an Austin uh, Matthews signed jersey? Oh, sorry. I didn't <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then that means that means that you, me, so just say hypothetically Stomps wins. Then Billy, Dan, Frank, and Naveed have to take Stomps out for dinner. Sounds fair. All right. The winner gets a dinner and you got to hang out. We got to hang out with each other. We can talk about these predictions. Hey, uh, guys, you guys are, are really nice guys. Uh, I appreciate you uh, coming on the show. Um, I know it was all an act, but it was really nice to take this time. It was last minute. We're going to try to be bringing you more entertainment, especially as there's a lot more hockey going on. Uh, again, happy 50th to Frank. Congratulations on making the the, the U S masters team stops. Congratulations on, you know, just being awake during the meeting here. And uh, I just want to say to Billy Jocks, the beard looks good. Uh, you're, you're, you're at the top of your game these days. And uh, it's always a pleasure to, to see you all. Any last comments from the guests or stops? Did we lose Frank? No, he's still there. there. Thank you. So you tuned in to season three, episode <laughs> four of the Neutral Zone. Frank's um, still, I hope you're awake while you're driving. Hey, Frank, where are you right at this moment? I'm at uh, Willow Road at Patriot Boulevard. I'm six miles away from the rink. He's right at Costco. And it's, and it's raining there? Yeah, it's raining here. So is that Glenview? Yeah, it's Glenview. Right. You're at it's the Costco. Glenview, yeah. Okay, guys, listen, I don't want to keep you any longer. Um, this was great. Have a great evening. I will be uploading this video within the next 30 to 45 minutes and you'll each get your 
individualized link. Please tell your family and friends to subscribe to our channel, hit the like button and hit the bell. So you get informed of any new episodes that are uploaded to YouTube. Go Elon Musk. Riveting. Yes. See you later, Nav. See you later, Stomps. Billy. Take care, See boys. you later. Good to see you guys.